and thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. I thank you. I want to congratulate you on your on your book. Thanks. I have it right here. Well, lucky guy. <laughs> and it is it is really a, a good book. So um, what I want to do is thank I want to, I want to begin by kind of going over your background, uh, talk a little bit about that, and then we can kind of go into uh, book writing, the process, and, and so on and so forth. I sent you some of the, the questions, and so maybe we can go over them as well. Right. Yeah, they're all fair fair game. So There you go. So why don't you first, uh, why don't you first tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So, um, um, so I've been uh, – uh, been involved in uh, the energy industry and security since about 1974. And uh, during that time, I started out as a Navy nuclear officer and then worked for a variety of companies, uh, usually in technical roles, technical management roles. But literally the day after 9-11, I was working for a company called Alstom Esca which is involved with the electric grid and uh, essentially the markets. And the CEO asked me to uh, take over security and he didn't know what that meant. Well, I had some ideas. So literally on 9-12-2001, I started my journey in security. And then since then I've gotten a handful of certifications. All I've done is security, I mean, uh, full-time and uh, both cyber and physical. And then, of course, I have a PSP from through ASIS, and then also I've gotten a CISSP and then uh, SANS uh, GICSP. So that's uh, for the internet, uh, sorry, industrial control security. Because you're very credential within the security industry. Let's go with the ASIS connection again. How, how long have you been in it? Since uh, 2013. Okay. Or thereabouts. And uh, the reason why I went uh, into ASIS, I've always was interested. North American Electric Reliability Corporation okay. that uh, is for SIP 14, which is a critical infrastructure protection requirement for substation security. And in order to do that inspection, you have to have a PSP oh. or be a former LEO. Well, I'm not a former LEO, so I got my PSP and then I've been maintaining it, of course and uh, doing a lot of inspections, especially substations and electric utility, physical security. Yeah, so you're well-versed in risk assessments and security surveys. Um, let, let's go to, if this is, is this your first book? Yes. It is. Okay, so what prompted you to, um, to write to want to write a book, and then also, what made you select this this topic for for your first project? So I've been doing risk assessments of critical infrastructure since about 1985. I originally started the place where I got my original training on how to do a, a solid risk assessment was at an organization called the Institute of Nuclear Power Operations. And it's based in Atlanta. And they had a very thorough program to teach people how to do risk assessments at nuclear plants. Well, I learned a lot there, which I've captured in the book. But then over the years, I've also essentially built upon that knowledge and established a bunch of different techniques to build uh, risk assessments. And most of the time, what I find is people... they uh, really don't know what you mean. They don't understand what that process constitutes. So uh, one of the things I've done is I built essentially a flow chart, which I've included in the book. And then of that flow chart, uh, I built a bunch of training around that. Well, so I'm, I was uh, 65 or so, I'm 69 now. And uh, when I was 65, I was thinking about, well, I'd like to somehow capture all this knowledge and get it back out into the industry. And as I even mentioned in my foreword or my introduction, this is my letter to the industry. I was just a matter of 
putting it together. And so that's how I got the idea of writing the book. Um, and um, it's, it's a labor of love. And it was fairly easy to write because it was a lot of it was from the top of my head. I didn't have to do, you know, much research or references or whatever. So obviously from the years of experience, because it's a, it's a very comprehensive book. I believe it is. It's over 300 pages. Yeah. How yeah. long, how long did it take you to, to write it? It took me about a year and that was almost uh, literally working on it every day uh, in one way, shape or form. So yeah, about a year. When, when you signed the, the contract with your, with your company, uh, Roth, Rothstein Publishing? Right. Did they have a text requirement? Like when I publish, when, when I am writing my books, my publisher will um, have a certain size book that they have in mind and that I'll agree to. And it has a, you know, and, it, and, and they basically judge that by the text. 50,000 wor uh, 50, words, 70,000 words. Did they have that type of uh, limitation on you as well? Well, it started out, <clears throat> actually, I want to go back to the, the, initial, the beginning of this, which might help. So before I got to Rothstein, I was planning on self-publishing. I was going to use Amazon and self-publish the book. So at the time, I didn't really have a page limit built into it. I'd already written a table of contents. I knew basically what I wanted to include. And it was just a matter of the build. Rothstein, um, Phil published an email one day um, over, you know, quite a while ago that basically said, hey, I'm looking for book ideas. If anybody has an idea, send me your, your information. So I sent him obviously my, my table of contents. I had a couple of chapters written, so I sent him those. Uh, and uh, gave, gave him a sense of what the theme was. Well, he liked it. So when he wrote the contract, he started it out with, I think, uh, 200, 250 pages, not words. And uh, to be frank, I had no sense of how big this book was going to be. So it was almost like I got a little scared because I thought, oh, crap, how am I going to do this? But obviously, after I started writing or continued to write, uh, it just kept on building. And uh, I suspect we could have cut it back down a little bit, but um, it has everything I wanted to include in it. So, Well, it's an excellent book. And once again, congratulations on the book of the year. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Which means uh, you will be on the, on the board or the, I should say the committee. Uh, right. You'll be running it. Yeah, Jenny uh, Hesterman uh, had informed me of that when she called to tell me the, the good news. Yes. And then she said, and congratulations, you'll be in charge of the selection committee in two years. And I went, oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. Is that good news or is that not? <laughs> That's funny. Well, you know, it's like I don't mind being uh, I've actually tried to get on several ASIS, uh, ASIS boards uh, and uh, I've been declined because I've because I'm a, a rookie on ASIS space. So, well, I think this is going to probably give you some, uh, some clout and some credibility. And uh, now I think they call them instead of councils, now they call them committees. Um, yeah. yeah, I was, I was on the crime and laws prevention council, which has since changed its name. I was the chair for that council for three years. And then I was on a hospitality and mm -hmm. uh, council as well. Um, it's a great ASIS. You know, I can't, I can't speak enough praise about ASIS. It's, it's a, it's a great organization. Uh, it's great for networking. Uh, you know, great, great individuals. I met a lot of friends. Uh, it's how I met Larry Friendly, who connected me to you uh, through through the council. Um, he called me. He called me. The, I think the day I got your email just to have a nice chat because I'd referenced his book in my, in, I'm sorry, I'd referenced his book in my book. And then I told him that I use his chapter on key management and key control uh, 
frequently with my consulting clients. How would you suggest to writers in general, and then maybe security practitioners, how to um, request or how to position themselves to to a publisher? Sure. Well, a um, couple of things, and actually what I did when I approached Rothstein, or Rothstein, you know, Rothstein and I did a mutual approach, is obviously the the publisher is trying to think about, okay, is this a product that will make me money that will sell? And so you've got to think in their mind on how to answer that question. So what I had done is I had, uh, you know, I had a product already started table of contents, a couple of chapters. Uh, and that was really helpful because you could see how I can write and, and get a sense of my style but then the other thing I did is I did a business plan and I found a checklist. It was in a, a book called Scribe, I think. I forget the name of it now, but it was essentially how to describes how to build a business case. Okay. And um, the business case is basically explaining to the publisher how the, why is the market even interested in this product? Now I've used I've got an entrepreneurial background, running my own business and a few other things, so it was pretty easy to to build it, and it was just a matter of I like the checklist that was in the uh, guidance that I had. So what I would suggest if you're going to approach a publisher, uh, I'd say pick out a couple that you that makes sense, look at what their products are. Because, uh, you know, for example, CRC is a big publishing house in the security space. Uh, but you might want to look at what their product looks like to make sure that's your style. Because you'd just be wasting your time if you didn't want to write it that way. Uh, and then the other thing is, is pick a couple, maybe two or three. And then I just do one at a time rather than a mass mailing. Because what if somebody jumps early, then you've got two other in hang fire and now you have competition and a bunch of other silly stuff. And, but that's, that was do that. And uh, that was my plan. And uh, the Rothstein thing was serendipitous and, uh, it worked out great. And Phil was actually my editor as well as my publisher. And I loved working with him. He was great. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, it, you know, having a good editing team it definitely makes a difference. Um, but you're right. Publishers are interested in uh, making money. When I, I set out, when I had an idea for my first book was, was primarily just to pay a tribute to the New Jersey State Troopers who died in the line of duty. So I set out to write a book mm -hmm. and sent it to uh, several publishers. Uh, again, exactly what you were saying, you got to find a niche that the likelihood that this publisher is going to be interested in your book. And I got two out of the three that were interested in it. Uh, and, but they wanted, it was too big of, and that goes back to that text I was talking about before it was too big of a of a book for their niche they have a certain look with the books and so they had said to me you know we can split it up we can do it chronologically we can take certain cases out so I did I didn't want to sensationalize one case over another so I did a chronological and they said well if you do that just be aware that if it doesn't do well there's not going to be another took no matter how passionate you feel and you want to pay tribute to them it's all about making money you know, yes. Yeah. So that's what it comes down. Unfortunately for me, the first book sold out in a month and a half. So I got a call from the publisher. Yeah. Um, the you had mentioned about the proposal, which is the steps that you have to take once you once you get an, an interest in your in your book. So the, the proposal process of, of writing it and uh, your table of contents. Now. With regards to um, the book writing process, you said you wrote every day. How many how, how many hours would you would you say that was? Yeah. So essentially, it was uh, the way I I want to answer it this way. 
I interviewed several people who I know have written books. And my interview was very simple. Tell me your process. How did you do it? Uh, what did you do? When did you do it? And so forth. And uh, one gentleman who's written a ton of security books, uh, Peter Gregory, uh, he told me that he gets up at, uh, at uh, five o'clock every morning and he would write for at least one to two hours. And that was his daily approach. Um, so what I did is I started out getting up at six and which is my, was my normal wake up time anyway. And then I would just go to my office and write for, and I'd set a timer and then I'd write for at least an hour from the time I started typing, uh, or doing research. And then, um, it worked out. Okay. There are a couple of challenges. One is, is that, um, it also affected my time in the morning with my family. And so what I did later on is I shifted that one hour to after I worked out. So I would work out at my local club, come home and just with my sweats on and everything else go straight in and then work. So from roughly four to six PM. Cause I was mort and, uh, I'd also, because I knew I was going to be writing when I was working out, I was thinking about how I was going to, you know, I was mentally writing the chapter or the, or doing the research or whatever. So at, that style worked out pretty well. And uh, that way there, I didn't have to get up at zero dark 30 to, to uh, hit the typewriter. Yeah. Yeah. And book writing, those that have written books, and those that have sat down, or I should say those who have completed books or manuscripts and those that have sat down and have begun that process but never completed it. Book writing is an exercise in perseverance. So, um, and that's, that's the key to, um, you know, doing a book because it is an elongated process, requires discipline, and it does take time away from the family. And uh, it is a sacrifice. And I think yeah. Larry, the Larry Fennelly said, if you really break it down in, ter in terms of a return on investment, in terms of what are you making per, per hour, you're talking, you know, you're talking pennies on, on the hour compared to how, yeah. much, how much time and effort is really put into the process. Exactly. I think a, a good practice for me was that when I was working on my master's thesis, um, which was uh, a document of 150 pages, fully researched with, you know, footnotes and endnotes and the whole works. Um, I did that uh, 2015. That really gave me some good training, if you will, on how to write the book, because I started the master's thesis to about a year before I graduated so that I could just keep on working on it and writing it and establishing it and getting references and so forth. So doing that really gave me good practice for writing the book. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I, I struggled with my master's uh, thesis in terms of meeting the minimum that I had to, in terms of page requirements. And now I, I, it's just the opposite. I struggle in keeping it, keeping it down. Right. So it definitely, Certainly helps you. The more you write, they say, the better you get, right? Um, mm. Or do you have another book in you? I, I don't know. Um, Phil and I talked last year, uh, December or so, and I was just going into a series of uh, shoulder surgeries, which, and I, on my right hand, which I was my dominant. And I was worried that. Even if Phil said, yes, write a book, that it would be difficult because of the recovery of the surgery and everything else. And I've had two shoulder surgeries since December, since January, and I'm just finally getting back into being able to type and everything else. Yeah. Anyway, the answer is at, when I talked to Phil at the end of last year because of COVID and the market and everything else, basically told me, just wait, there's nothing we're having challenges as it is trying to sell what we've got in stock. 
Um, I wouldn't I think I'm thinking about writing a second book, uh, I, but I'm not really sure what it could be. It could either be a revision or a continuation of that book on other specific areas. For example, airport security, because of my background, how to do risk assessments of airports, maritime security, and so forth. But uh, that's one option. The other option is, is that um, I might consider some other books, but uh, like I'm a, I'm a photographer and writing a book about how I do my uh, landscape and wildlife photography would be fun. Uh, but Phil's not interested in that and I can't blame him because that's not security stuff. Uh, I don't know yet. I, I'd say I've kind of mixed bag. It's uh, um, it, I don't have any bad feelings or experiences from my writing. So, I mean, I, I enjoyed it, uh, but it was just a matter of, do I really want to jump into that pool again and have all sorts of deadlines and everything else? Definitely enjoyed speaking with you about, about the book. Congratulations. And Thank you very much.